Uh, but speaking of prospective students, let's just kind of recap it and talk specifically about that. So if you were applying for the IMAT again, what would you tell yourself? Like, how would you, why, why do you specifically pick Rome? Would you, who, which kind of person would you recommend to apply to Rome? Things like that. Uh, if I was doing the IMAT again, to be honest, for as many ups and downs I had over the last few years, I don't think I would have changed anything about my application. Mm -hmm. uh, and that says a lot because if you knew me in first and second year, I wanted nothing to do with the city. It was dead to me. The university was dead to me. <laughs> and I just hated everyone and everything. And I think it's just because I didn't do a lot of research and I didn't know what I was expecting. And what I thought I was going to get was completely different. Um, as far as my choice for the university goes, I would definitely recommend Sapienza for the pure thing of, I think that the quality of our professors don't really compare to other universities and that is a massive upside, but if you are going to apply to this university, you need to be patient because your student support isn't going to be great. There are 110,000 students so when you are going through any process like getting a student card or registering or trying to get help at the info desk there are massive downfalls um they really i think you need to be very patient and i think like it's kind of again a balance like you're getting an excellent level of education and you know sapienza being the biggest university in europe uh i think that's like a really great thing for its reputation but the downside is is that you're never really going to be a priority like you're always going to be a number um because there are so many people and so many students and you're a small course and you're not going to get as much as you know the budget allocation or as much as the facilities or help or care and you know again that's balanced by professors so overall I would not change anything about my IMAT application and to anyone who is considering Rome, I would say that if you are willing to live in a big chaotic city but want something to do every day and want constant change and want constant like museums and things to see and an incredible, uh, you know, city life, like a experience and the social experience regardless of the university i think you should choose rome but you do have to be patient you do have to understand that you are going to get frustrated you are going to sometimes get angry that everything is always late uh things are going to shut down you know it is a dirty city uh, I don't care what anyone says about any other city. Rome is dirty. There is graffiti everywhere. You know, like the roads are in a bad condition. Just being honest, like you have to take the bad with the good. And if you are doing the IMAT and you are considering Rome, you have to prepare to give up the dream you have in your head about what Rome is. Because as beautiful and touristic and picturesque as it is, it has a dirty underbelly and yeah. it is chaotic and it is dirty and it is frustrating and the people are rude and the buses do catch on fire. But like, I think it's worth it. And if you're considering Rome, you have to be able to willing to accept these and it's the same with the university the quality of education is excellent the professors are world-class but you will run into organizational issues like you know sometimes you will send 10 emails and you will get 10 different replies and nothing is streamlined and you know you go to the international office and there might be no one there or there might be a hundred person line and you know you have to make sure that you are picking the correct thing for you while keeping in mind the negatives. I don't know if that makes sense. Like that is yeah. the honest thing. If you are considering Rome, like I think you are making a good decision if you are ready to accept the frustrations that come with it. That's yeah. it. Like that's that's it. That's a really good kind of ending to this this whole interview because that's the whole point of doing this and interviewing people from different universities. It's to find out what 
are the positive aspects? What are the negative aspects? What should people keep in mind so that they have a better idea of what it's like in the different universities and to choose the one that fits them the best? Yeah. Because a lot of people just go, this university is the best. The rankings are really good. Um, I heard a lot of good things about it. I'm going to go there and they have no idea what they're getting into. No. No. So I'm really glad you pointed that, those things out. Honestly, like, oh, that is actually one thing I would tell myself is that before I got in, I cared about the ranking. I cared about like what yes. number <laughs> the university was. And I can tell you now that that is actually the least important thing that you should consider when picking your university. Because also those rankings are mostly highly dependent on like the amount of research the university yeah. publishes. So a smaller university might have a lower ranking because they don't publish as much, but that is not necessarily reflective of uh, the quality of that university. And second of all, what I see a lot in the IMAT groups, people seem very uh, like uninformed or misinformed about how important the ranking of the university is in your prospects of a residency, okay? Yeah. In most countries, when you're applying, you are gonna sit a standardized exam. They're not going to care what university you are sitting from up until the interview process. And at that stage, your score is more important in getting that interview. So. If when you are considering your university, do not look at the numbers, do not look at the different rankings because they are not reflective of the experience you're going to have or what's best suited for your needs. And six years is a long time. Like yeah. if you think that, you know, say like Rome has the number one spot in the world, but you hate big cities, you should not pick Rome because you will just hate it you will hate it here you will hate going to university every day you will hate like what you study you will just have an awful time and you might think oh six years isn't long i'm going to the best university but that's not how it is mental health is just as important as physical health and people don't consider that and medicine is a long journey like medical school is the easiest and shortest time and it's very important for you to get through it in one piece so when you are choosing your ranking for the IMAT, do not look at, uh, sorry, when, you, when you're choosing the order of your priorities, do not look at the rankings on the website. You need to look at your personal budget, uh, the weather, personally, like the weather is really important to me, and the city life. Like that, I think it should be what you're considering for your ranking, not mm -hmm. if it's like two spots higher than this university, because it's, it's not going to make a difference. And I promise you after five years, you're going to be like, Wow, that really made zero difference. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. That seems like a good ending to the video. Yeah, sorry that took so long and so much ranting and talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was a really good interview. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, you could check out my previous videos. Uh, I recorded a video with my friend Ellie from fourth year for Pavia. So check that video out and check out my other two videos on how to study for the IMAT. Thank you very much, Sarah, for joining me on this interview. No problem. All right. All right. Goodbye.